Hey everyone, welcome. Three to four months ago, I released a video about configuring OpenVPN on Synology's DSM. Uh, it was a tutorial written by MMD. If you want to try uh, that same configuration on your own NAS, I will put a link in the video description for that. And you can call that video the first part, and today's video will be the second part. In today's video, we're going to create another DSM user, and we're going to give that DSM user access to our OpenVPN server. So we're going to create another certificate for this user. We're also going to disable access uh, for this user on the VPN server, and we're going to revoke his certificate for misbehaving or maybe he lost his certificate i don't know um, could be plenty of reasons for that but i'm going to show you that in this video so first we're going to log into our nas and we're going to create a user so i've basically set everything up and um, we're going to log into our nas system and we're going to control panel and i will put it right over here yes and we're going to user and we're going to create a new user so let's say Chevy wants access to our Synology NAS and all the good stuff that's on there and he wants to gain access from well basically anywhere in the world so he's going to need VPN because I won't open up all the ports on the Synology services so for that we're going to create this user um, we leave email etc blank for this video, um, but we give him a password, just a standard password. Next, uh, he will be part of the group user. Next, yes, next, next, yes, next, apply. Okay. so. We have a user called Chevy, and we're going to give Chevy uh, VPN access. So for that, we're going to XCA, and I already have opened up the database for this OpenVPN server. Um, just click on uh, certificates, click on CA certificate, click on new certificate, and we're going to create a certificate for Chevy. Uh, at the bottom, a template, uh, select uh, client assert, click on apply all, and then we go to subject and internal name for keeping things clear we're going to call this one chevy and common name will also be chevy in this case of course you can give it any name you like and then we click on generate a new key we call the key chevy as well and it will be 4096 bits create Okay, successfully created the private key, Chevy. Okay, then we can click on OK. Yes, okay. So now we have a certificate called Chevy and we have a private key for Chevy as well. Um, the rest we leave unchanged. We can just add it to our existing configuration. So we're going to, in my case, export the certificate called Chevy. Click on export. Click on the location you want to export the file to, and if everything is all right, just hit OK. We're going to do the same for the private key. Go to private keys, click on the username we just created, and click on export as well. Um, select PEM private, and in this case, we're going to change the file extension to key, and just hit OK. So now we have the certificate, and we have the key for Chef. So, now we browse to the location on where we set this to. We're just going to copy these two files. And I'm going to copy them over to my laptop, which will act as the secondary computer on which this VPN will supposedly run on. So I have a temporary folder and I'm just going to paste those two files in here. And from that location, I'm just going to copy them in our VPN configuration folder. Remember when you copy the certificate and the key uh, to the new location, you will need the ca.crt, you will need the uh, ta.key as well, and you will need an open VPN configuration file. And as I said, I will post a link in the video description on how to set this one up. And um, so it will basically uh, be the same, except it will be a new user. Okay, so now that we have our certificate and our key in this folder, we're going to edit the open VPN file. And I have opened it up and we're going to change 
the user for this. So I'm going to remove test and this will be Chevy. And the same goes for the key file. It will be Chevy as well. Like this, yes. I'm going to save that. And we're going to try to log in. And first let me check if the OpenVPN server is actually running at this moment. We'll go back to our NAS OpenVPN. OpenVPN is running and the changes are made will be instant so there's no need to turn off the OpenVPN server. So at this moment we're good to go and we're going back to the second machine and right here in the bottom I have OpenVPN. I have my test NAS configuration and I'm just going to hit connect. And I'm going to log in with Chevy and uh, which password I created for him. I'm going to hit OK. We'll check the certificates, the key, TLS handshake, and we're connected. So, Chevy has access to our VPN server, and he is connected, and everything works like, like it should. So, um, now I want to disable access for Chevy on this VPN server, for whatever reason. It can be anything. So, at first, um, I'm just going to disconnect Chevy. And we're going back to our NAS and we're going to uh, OpenVPN. It's still running, of course. But on the left, you have a tab called Privilege. If you click on that, you can see the users and on which VPN server they have access to. In this case, we want to disable access for Chevy on the OpenVPN server. So we're just going to check this box, just clear this box, and we're going to hit Save. So the next time Chevy wants to connect through VPN, he will not be able to. That's basically the idea. So we're going back to the second PC, Chevy's PC in this case, and we're going to try to connect to VPN. So Chevy fills in his username and his password. Authentication failure, it says. He can't connect. Wrong username password, we'll try again. Just keep saying this. Chevy can, however, log in with, for example, my user credentials. I thought they must be the same. But apparently, they don't have to be the same as long as it's, uh, it's an older user. If everything is in order, Chevy doesn't have my user credentials, so I won't be uh, afraid of that. So this is one way to do it, and it's basically the easiest way to do it for most people. Um, there is another way, and that's to revoke the certificate. But we need to let the VPN server know that that certificate is no longer valid. And you can do that by creating a certificate revocation list, a CRL. Um, but a CRL uh, needs to be maintained and needs to be renewed. Uh, CRLs have a validation time, so um, you need to manage CRLs. And it's a, it's a bit harder, and that's what we're going to try now. Um, first, we give Chevy back his access. So now it's time to revoke Chevy's certificate. We're moving back to XCA and we're going to right click on the Chevy certificate and we're going to select revoke. Invalid since, well, immediately. So we're going to leave this as it is. And revocation reason, privilege withdrawn. Yeah, we're going with that one. Um, choose your reason and click OK. So now we can see it has a mark and it is disabled it is revoked as it is and then we're going to right click on ca and we're going to ca and we're going to generate crl click on that and here we can give it a validation time standard it's set on 30 days and we're going to leave it as it is so we're going to click on ok successfully created the revocation list ca okay if we move over to this tab uh, at the top revocation lists we have our generated list. We're going to export this list. Click on export. So here you can give a name for your revocation list. Uh, standard, it comes on CA and it comes with a file extension called .pem. Um, you can also export it as DER, but I didn't got DER working. So we're going with PEM. We're going to call this one CRL.pem and you may hit OK. So if we move over to the folder we exported this file in, we have crl.pem right here. And 
we're going to upload this to our NAS. And for that we will use FileZilla. So we're going to fire up FileZilla and I'm going to connect to my test NAS. Yes. And this will be my temp folder VPN files. And we're going to move a CRL PEM over to the right side. Yes, we uploaded it. And basically now we're done with um, FileZilla. So now we're going to fire up PuTTY and we're going to make a SSA connection to one as. Fill in your credentials. In my case, it's booby trap. My standard password and we're going to do the next couple of steps as root. So for that we type sudo minus i. We log in again and we're root. So what we want to do now is copy our crl.pem file to our open VPN folder and let the VPN server know that the certificate Chevy is revoked because it doesn't know that yet. So we're going to um, copy that file over by typing cp slash volume one homes booby trap VPN files and we call it crl.pem to slash user yes sino etc packages vpn center open vpn so now we copied the file over crl pem is now in the open vpn folder and we're going to move over to that folder as well by changing directory so cd slash user sino etc packages vpn center open vpn and let's have a look inside Serial PAM is right there. Um, now we need to let the OpenVPN server config file know that the CRL PAM is in there and it needs to check that list for revoke certificates. So we're going to edit the OpenVPN server config file with the editor V. So for that we type V OpenVPN conf dot user and hit enter. And you may add another line at the bottom of this file and that will be this line crl verify and with this command we tell the openvpn config file it needs to check this list and we're going to make some changes to this file by pressing i and it gives me a warning changing a read only file make sure you have right access to this file so I'm just going to get out of this you may forget this um, and we're going to change the permission on this file and we're going to change it back right after we're done. So chmod 777 to openvpn.conf.user Yes, and we're going to open it up again with v. User. Yes. So now we have write access to a file. You may press I again and you are in insert mode and you can add your own commands to this configuration file. So as I mentioned, you may add a line on the bottom of this file called CRL dash verify with the name of your uh, certificate revocation list. And in our case, that's CRL dot PEM, just like that. And you may hit escape, colon, W, Q, enter. So now it saved the changes to our file. At first, we're going to check if it's actually revoked. So we're going back to our NAS and we're just going to disable our VPN server. So it will use the new configuration file. I believe there's, um, there's a timer on this uh, for uh, the CRL. It, I think it will check the CRL every 60 minutes, but I'm not sure about that. I, I thought it was 60 minutes or so. Well, I want it instant. So for that, I'm going to restart the VPN server and we're going to hit apply. Okay, yeah, UDP, and let's have overview. Okay, we didn't get any warning messages, so we may assume the VPN server is running like it should. And we move back to our second computer, and we're going to log in again with Chevy. So let's hit connect with password. And what it does now, it checks the certificate from Chevy and the key 
and it sees that the certificate Chevy is revoked. So what it will do, it will just drop the connection and it will not let Chevy connect to the VPN server. So we are not getting connected at this moment. So we disconnect and we're going to test if we still can log in with other accounts. So for that, we are going to use my own certificates. And that one is booby trap. That is booby trap. Yes. Save that. Right click. This one. Connect. With my own username. And it connects perfectly fine. And we are connected. So with this, yeah. It basically concludes what I wanted to say, what I wanted to talk about um, concerning uh, adding users with certificates for OpenVPN, disable uh, access to OpenVPN and revoke their certificates. Of course, you could play it safe and you could just um, go to privilege and for this, select this box, hit save, and you will be sure he will not use certificates of another user. You have a pretty much a security breach if Chevy has access to other VPN keys and certificates. So it's basically worst case scenario, but you get the idea. You can and you can disable the access on the open VPN uh, configuration itself by simply checking that box, uh, make sure Chevy doesn't have access to open VPN, or you can just revoke his certificate, create a CRL for it, um, as I said, a CRL has a validation time. In this case, it's set to 30 days. Um, you can extend the time period. You can shorten the time period, uh, but you will need to maintain the CRL and you will need to let the server know. And because we are working with XCA, we need to manage the CRL ourselves in this case. So that basically concludes the OpenVPN part. We're working on a new type of video. It will be Q&A videos. Uh, we're getting all sorts of questions on our videos. Thumbs up for that. But not all questions are easy to answer with a short text message. So for that, we're going to create Q&A videos. So if you have questions, suggestions, maybe some advice, you can leave them down in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.